Yeah, I had I had a lot of friends in prison. Um, you know, uh, you know, you again, you know, institutional environment. You develop camaraderie, make yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I connected really well with the people that I was that I was there with. Um, we had one very simple and important rule in prison, which was don't ask anybody what the crime is and don't look into it. Oh, for don't, real? You don't, don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Because it makes things a lot smoother and a lot easier when you don't know. Oh, that's real interesting. But everyone probably knew who you were, right? Yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it didn't matter. Were but you I, given a chance to wrap things up, say goodbye? No, I was... Yeah, to, was to your immediate. fellow prisoners? It was immediate, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they took me. They, they're like, we're not like... But you know. knew the day was coming. I knew the day was coming, but they put they put me in they put me in a separate unit immediately. When the community, yeah, they, they saw it on T like the prison staff saw it on T like I, it's in my book like a whole story about it. But like there was they saw it on TV and they're like, oh, you're you're going, you're, you're, we're we're putting you aside. Why'd they do you, that? Uh, I think they just didn't want anything bad to happen to me in the meantime. Mm. Like anything. Interesting. An injury in the workshop. If you know. only Epstein's prison guards were as careful mm. with yeah, them as they were yeah. with you. Oh yeah, it's super suspicious. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> super suspicious. How they? How I they... want to be. I want. I have opinions on this. Okay. Actually, <laughs> somebody who's been incarcerated in the in both both the military and the federal and the. And, and I mean, you were a high priority prisoner, but Jeffrey Epstein was a very high priority prisoner. Yeah. We can do an aside here. What do you think about that whole sh thing about how murder? Yeah, murder. murder. You do. <laughs> that's that's how, how that's how a prison murder happens. Mm -hmm. I I know when it happens. I'm not gonna say I'm not, I'm not gonna say like some of the sad stories from prison where we know bad stuff happened because like you know it's like how do you prove it as an inmate? But um, and some of these stories are in my book. Um, and uh, but yeah, like definitely because it's, it's like super like it's definitely like oh yeah, I'm just like that's suspicious. The cameras were off. That's the how you do it. Cars weren't that's on. That's how you do it. If you want to, if you want to get rid of somebody in prison, that's how you do it. The guards do that kind of thing. That's all they do. They really? just fuck with people. Yeah, they fuck with people. This, I mean, you know, ma sick? imagine this. Imagine you're sitting there and your job is to is to watch inmates for twelve hours, mm -hmm. and you're just sitting there, or tossing your piece of paper or whatever. Like, of course you're gonna screw with us. Like we're we're like, and we're not, and like nobody, you know, nobody listens to inmates. Nobody, you know. Um, I, I want to say this real fast because I'm you know, I'm really passionate about this. And that is, um, you know, I've I've been asked a lot. You know, people ask me often ask me a lot. Was it scary being in prison, or you know, like, like you know, how how were people in pr prison? And I, and I just gotta say this, time and time again, the most violent and dangerous people in prison, without question, were prison guards every wow. single time. And this was military, civilian, um, state, federal, uh, just endless amounts of. Uh, Fear and anxiety of the arbitrariness and and the uh, the the sort of lack of expect uh, of of consistent expectations mm. of what uh, a CO or a prison guard or or somebody who is watching at, or a correctional uh, officer of any of any variety mm. was going to do mm. um, and the senior staff as well and uh, and you know it's it's like it's like it haunts me to this day because like I you know I don't associate like somebody who's like in a prison uniform with with like a threat. Whereas, like, I see somebody like in a in in a in a CO uniform, and I'm like, ooh. You have a little trauma yeah. left over. From oh this. yeah, definitely. So sad. Do you think it attracts sickos who like power? Absolutely. That's what it is. And it, it's even worse than being it, it, in some in some respects. I think it's actually worse than being like a regular cop because at least a regular cop gets to, like carry a gun, right? Mm. They're sort of like the th the second thought, like they're the they're the sort of like afterthought sort of cops, right? Was there any kind of nor was there? normal prison guards or was it just an accepted culture of like these are our objects to fuck with and do what we want i would say that it's that there that it's a rule of thirds which is pretty consistent with what i've seen in other in other institutions um so there is uh there there are the prison guards who are goody two shoes they care about their job they really um they they really think that they're doing a, a good they're doing a service or whatever and they're fair to you guys and the and they try to be fair okay um they, they're that's a high attrition rate. That's a fast turnover rate. Right, of makes people. sense. Yeah. Then there's the, the then the there, there's the prison guards who, um, who look the other way at the bad apples. Right. Okay. They're like, I'm just doing a job. I'm cutting a paycheck. Um, you know, I don't I, I hear, hear no evil, see no evil. They're not I'm, sadistic. They just they're just here to work. Right. But if they see something that's that's sketchy, mm -hmm. they will look the other way. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the then then there's the people who are absolutely sadistic. They will do the worst kinds of things. They will play games. 
They will lie. They will cheat. They will steal. They'll. They're yeah. just. And they get away with there it. And nobody lot. will question. And then it's the other. And then the worst part is that 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 other third of people who look, look the other way, way yeah. just look, you know don't do anything and they don't say anything. So when when there's like a really sick prison guard, um, does anything ever happen to them? Ever? Very rarely. I've never seen it. I've. I've, I've only never seen people re retaliated against for reporting it to, and that includes uh, other CEOs. other guard. <clears throat> well, that happens in the police as well. Just yeah, normal the same police. It's the same. The blue wall of silence kind of thing is is. What is was universal. the most uh, effed up thing that you saw a prison guard do? It's in my book. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's. How about the second dark. most then? Uh, <laughs> second darkest thing. Second darkest thing um, that I've seen in, uh, in in prison guards do. Um, uh, it's not it's not one thing, but like there's just neglect of of people with mental health issues, right? Wow. People who people say I'm in a, I like a person having a mental health crisis, saying I'm having a dark time, I'm I'm have I'm not doing so good right now. Mm -hmm. I need to see somebody, mm -hmm. and the just absolute like disgust or um, disregard, and then placing that person in a more dangerous situation, right? Putting them in a cell alone with their with, with sort of like boot laces or something, right? They're like, do it. Yeah, they're essentially. And, yeah, and then whenever and then whenever somebody follows through with it, they're just like, oh well, we didn't know, and mm -hmm. you know, like, the cameras whoa, whoa, weren't that's on. That's so sick. Yeah, it's they, just it's just it's just d extremely dark. Wow. They really see you as some other things. I would imagine, yeah. not We're, human, yeah. subhuman. Yeah, and I think I mean that, it's kind of what society's taught us, right? Yeah. Because like, law, you know, it's the law and order effect, right? in my mind um because like we, we have this very pop culture understanding of 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 the, the justice system right um which is you know uh, a, a crime takes place um an offender or a suspect is is arrested um a prosecutor uh builds a case with the detectives or, or the officers or whatever and then it goes to trial uh and then there's a long there's sort of a trial process which never really actually happens with plea deals Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then, there, then after the trial, there, you know, somebody goes to, you know, somebody goes to jail, and that's the end of the story, right? You know, like it's, it's that's the end of the story. But for that person, typically, they, that's not the end of the story. It's years and years and years of, of the rest right. of their lives. Right. People grow. People change. Mm -hmm. People, people really do change, and it doesn't take that long. It takes maybe, you know, especially, especially if you're in your twenties, it doesn't, you know, it's five, you know, five years it's in your twenties, mm -hmm. a long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. In terms of like, uh, of your, of your personality and your, sure. and your sort of, sort of changing. So you would see, you know, I, and, I, and I've seen this a lot where, you know, somebody, somebody, somebody who is like a terrible person will like become like a really like stable, hmm. you know, reasonable person, like a, within a, within a, within a three to four year period of time. Right. And so, um, we ha we sort of forget that about pe people because of this pop culture thing, uh, and and it's and even you know, and it, even with like ju justice reform advocates, I have this problem because like they're very focused on like the 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 at the scene um, police brutality type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, which is which is awful, right? You know, it's like murdering it's it's like murdering of people, murdering of, of houseless people, um, the abuse of people. Um, not taking, you know, not taking people of color or immigrants at their word whenever they say that, that, that they've been abused or they've been harassed or that, you know, that that uh, that they've been falsely accused of something, you know, like there a lot of criminal justice aspects focus on that, but they forget that like that's that we have two million people and we have like yeah. well, I think it's what uh, over Almost two million. Almost a percent. Uh, a whole percent. Yeah, it's like twenty five percent of the world's prison population yeah. is in the United States. Yeah. And we you know, often voiceless, often not unseen, mm -hmm. often forgotten about. Even by people who really do care and really, really do want to focus on these issues, because of just sort of the way we've sort of focused on stuff. Because we, we focus on stuff because we can see whenever there's pol police brutality yeah. right. that happens on a cell phone camera, we can mm -hmm. see when that happens. But when it ha when it happens in a prison, there's no cell phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the prison system is one of the most in America and now. It's one of the biggest. Uh, Problems we have as a society. I mean, the yeah. way that it's privately owned. Yeah. That there's a vet, a um, financial interest in keeping people in prison for as long as possible. Absolutely. And also, there's a profit motive. So, like, the conditions are going to be 
horrible. Yeah, the They're prison gonna, industrial complex. It, is, it's just a, it's a fucking nightmare. It really is. Yeah. And, and like nonviolent offenders in prison. I mean, it's just fucking horrible. Yeah. It's hard to bridge that gap when you don't get to see what goes on there. Yeah, exactly. And that, you know, how and do I, you go to battle over something you don't see? And, and as much yeah. as I have solidarity with people, uh, like I, I remember 2020 with George Floyd, with the, with the George Floyd yeah. like, protest and um, Breonna Taylor protest. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, I felt this affinity and the solidarity with with them. But like, it's it's also it's also don't forget about people in prison because yeah. We, yeah. we don't have cameras mm -hmm. in prison. We can't take our own cell phone photos we, or videos. We, you know, this stuff happens. The revolution. I've seen this stuff with my own yeah. eyes yeah. Yeah. and you, ha you have to believe me that this mm -hmm. happened. It seems also that people are just getting, do you think in general people are getting over sentenced? They're going to prison for too long. You said that you could change in five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you think I mean, 35 years is insane almost for any crime. Do you? Yeah. Think? I, oh, yeah. My uh, I'm a very different person than I was at 22. Mm -hmm. Very different. Yeah. I mean, 22, you're still a kid. I mean, yeah. In all absolutely. honesty, you know. Yeah. I when I came out of prison, I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm like way different. You My still family have a chance you. to like you still have a chance to also build a life. I feel like where if you are released after 35 years what, yeah what happens with you then i like, mean you know it's the end of shawshank institutionalized yeah. Shawshank yeah. redemption exactly. right you yeah. Know, yeah the characters who like I, i'm not gonna lie i when i the first time that i was hurt that i heard about that i was getting out of prison i was actually scared mm -hmm. that was, was your it, first reaction um it wasn't my first reaction but like there was a couple days when i started to absorb that this is a possibility and i was like i i, I don't know like mm -hmm. i'm scared because i What's changed? What's different? You know, what? Um, you know, it was like an overwhelming thought. And this was only after seven years, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine somebody who's who, who's never held a cell phone before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, who's spent 30, 40 years in prison. I mean, you know, I, and you know, what I've 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 now had a chance to meet people who have spent many decades in prison and be released, and they are. You know, after a couple of years, there the the adapt the the adaptiveness of humans is is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. But the the fear and the anxiety that comes with being released from prison for the first time is is very real, mm -hmm. and it's very and, and it sticks with you for a while. It lingers, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and and I you know and I'm still in therapy, you know, for for uh, dealing with institutionalization. I'm still in therapy for sort of de dealing with the consequences of spending uh, such a su such a large amount of time in like a, a hostile in institutional environment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, it's very much it's very much still a part of my you know um, the difficulty that I have with you know developing you know, long-term relationships and friendships and things because, you know, like, you know, both, both, both in prison and in, and, uh, and, and in the military, you know, like I knew who had my back mm -hmm. and I knew what tomorrow brought and now out here, I don't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know who to trust mm -hmm. and I don't know if somebody's putting on a front because I'm not with them 14 hours a day, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, and, and,